Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship from beautiful Savior Lutheran in Waukesha, Wisconsin. As we continue the joy of this Easter season, we rejoice in a God who would not have us stuck at a tomb thinking about all the things that have happened in the past, but moves us along forward in his love. As we hear in the scripture readings today, life is not yet always easy as we go forward with Jesus. We'll hear about the early church being persecuted, but the Lord continuing to be with them, keeping them strong and safe. We'll also hear Peter's words about in the midst of persecution and troubles, we can have exceeding joy in our Savior. And then the traditional account for the Sunday after Easter about the week later when Jesus appeared to Thomas, who would not believe what the other disciples were saying about Jesus being alive. We pray that the Holy Spirit would work in us that sure belief that Jesus indeed is alive among us through his spirit, doing great things. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our worship begins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let the Redeemer's name be sung, through every land, by every tongue.
Our first reading is from Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on our cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thoidas appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, In the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who, through faith, are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor 
when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our final reading is from John chapter 20. The other disciples told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Welcome to Puppet Time with Pastor. I'm here with my friend Maurice, our friendly black bear from Northwoods Beach, Wisconsin. Maurice, how are you doing? Not good. You're not doing well. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. Yeah, you kind of look like you have some tears in the eye there. Um, life just isn't going well. What's wrong? Mm, doing terrible at baseball. You're doing terrible at baseball? You love baseball. I don't think I'll ever get better. You don't think you'll ever get better? Oh, I'm sure you'll get better, but it is kind of hard when everything isn't going right. You just don't believe you're going to get better, huh? Mm, don't believe it. Well, I believe it will get better. But you know, who else had a hard time believing things? Thomas. Thomas? Yep, Thomas. We just heard about him. Thomas is the one who didn't believe that Jesus was really alive, even though the other disciples had seen Jesus and told him, hey, he's alive. Thomas wouldn't believe it. How come? How come Thomas wouldn't believe it? Well, it's just like you and me. We usually think about seeing is believing. If I see things, I'll believe it. So, for instance, if you start seeing some improvement in baseball, then you'll believe that, hey, you really can get better again and, and do all the things I know you can do. But right now, all you're seeing are the bad things. Striking out, maybe making some errors. All those things. All those things. Yeah, that's not good. And when we see all the bad things, boy, it's easy to just kind of focus on that. And I'm sure that's what Thomas was doing thinking about the fact that Jesus had died and his body was buried. He couldn't believe Jesus was alive until he'd see Jesus. And you know the amazing thing is? Jesus came to him because Jesus wanted Thomas to know that he is alive. And Jesus wants us to know that too. He wants us to believe even though we don't see with our eyes. But you know how we see him? Well, we see him in the Bible. When we hear that word of God, the Holy Spirit helps us to know that it is true. We can believe it. Christ is risen. Risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hey, that's great news. We are going to have some really bad days in life, and we're going to have times where things just don't go right. Might even want to cry because things are going so badly. But Jesus promises to wipe away those tears. Jesus promises to go with us. Jesus always promises to love us. And if Jesus is with us, hey, everything's going to be good. That will give us great joy even in the midst of some hard situations. We're going to hear more about that a little bit in the message. But before we do, let's sing the hymn. Once again, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's sing the hymn.
The Lord says through Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God knows the plans he has for you and me. And it's not plans that, oh, he's going to make me financially successful. I'm never, ever going to have any physical ailments. Everything's going to be great that way. Nope, he's not talking about that. He's talking about how he has plans to use you and me to do something much greater. To do something that has nothing to do with me being personally successful, but me glorifying God as I spread the wondrous joy that Christ is risen he is risen indeed, alleluia. And so the Lord puts you and me in different circles of influence, different situations in life where we can share Jesus. And you know, as soon as we share Jesus following that plan, the evil one tries to mess it up. I want you to look carefully at this quote by Jonathan Kahn. Here's what he says. The enemy attacks the purposes of God. Let the attacks focus you all the more on the plans. In other words, there are going to be times in life where you are doing what God wants you to do and the evil one is going to try to disrupt it. We have an account of that that is laid out throughout that book of Job. 
And we can experience it in our personal lives too. Now, listen carefully. I'm not saying that if something happens that is bad due to my error, oh, the evil one's attacking me. No, I make mistakes. And so, for instance, if I come to church ill-prepared and everything is just a hodgepodge all over the place, nothing is in order. Oh, the evil one's trying to mess this up. No, he's not. I have not prepared. It is my fault. On the other hand, if I'm doing what the Lord is calling me to do and the evil one puts obstacles in the way, puts things in the way that tries to dissuade me from doing what I know God has called me to do, oh, that's the evil one trying to defeat the purposes of God among us. He does that to you too. You might be saying, but pastor, I'm stuck here at home. I have a hard time even getting out of my chair. How can this be God's purpose? You know how it's God's purpose? Because you're relying on him. And other people see that. Other people might even be overhearing what you're listening to now, the word of God coming. God has a marvelous way of working through every situation. Let's hear about that now in Acts chapter 5. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. Another way of saying that is, and tell the people all about these words of life. It's interesting. The angel doesn't say, hey, go tell everyone about Jesus. No, he's talking about this new life. Because what does Jesus bring? He is not dead in the tomb. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So he brings us this whole new joy in life, this whole new understanding that life is not only a gift from God, it's a life to live with God. And that's the wonder of Jesus. The very Son of God came to this earth not to give us a new rule book, but to take away the guilt of our sin, which separates us from a loving, living, personal relationship. And so Jesus lived the perfect life, died on the cross to cover the guilt of our sin as the Lamb of God, and rose victorious, saying, look, this is all true. Whoever believes in me will not perish, will have eternal life and life with me right now. So the angel tells them, hey, you go share this new life, these words of life. And so it happens. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. The apostles then were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Do you see what Peter is doing? To use Lutheran language, he is using both law and gospel. The law shows us our sins. He's saying, look, you guys nailed him to that cross. That's what you wanted. But God raised him from the dead. Why? Not because he wants to send out lightning bolts and consume you in his anger, but he wants to lead you to repentance, the forgiveness of sins, joy in Jesus, this brand new life. And so in the midst of this bad situation, Peter is bringing the joy of Jesus. But you know, when the evil one is at work, he robs people of joy. He keeps people from seeing what God is truly doing. And so the reaction is not, oh man, that's the best thing I ever heard. But the reaction is anger and hatred. They want blood. They want to put the disciples to death. But there is God at work even in that. 
But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Man of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. In the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Now, Gamaliel is not a believer in Jesus, but Gamaliel is used by God. Gamaliel uses human reason to say, you know, we have to think about the path we're going down here. And if we let our anger get the best of us, things aren't going to go well. How about if we just let things kind of play out and we'll see what happens. Gamaliel may have had in mind that it's just going to go away. It's a fad. And of course it didn't. But you see what's happening here? God is in control. God is using the words of a person who is not a follower of Jesus at this point to change the situation for the good of his people. Once again, God is in control. You see, God has plans for us, and God's going to accomplish his plans, and the evil one tries to dissuade us from those things. The evil one would show us all of our flaws and say, see, pessimist, don't you think things are always going to continue to go wrong? Probably right about that. Or you who's self-reliant. Look at all the great things you've done. Oh, yeah, except there where you failed, and there where you failed, too. Better just give up or just try some more on your own and, and don't rely on God. You don't need him. Or whatever flaw it might be, the evil one brings those up and tries to keep us from growing in Christ and knowing the joy of his salvation. We're stuck thinking everything is miserable. I can't get any worse. I'll just keep plodding along. But Jesus comes along and says, remember, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. He is very much in control. The grave could not hold him. Death could not hold him because the very Son of God is the Lord of life and the very Son of God through his Spirit would give you life and would give me life. Why? So we can share the glory and joy of living in that loving, living personal relationship with Almighty God. Think about it this way. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are you when the Holy Spirit works that faith in you which says, I know this is true. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Because Jesus lives, I get to live with him. Where I go, he goes right there with me. And the one who himself endured all those terrible attacks of the evil one, won. He's victorious. And so when the evil one tries to mess with me, I can say, go back to hell where you belong because I'm with Jesus and the grave is empty. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Does that mean the evil one's going to totally give up? Hardly. Remember these words from 1 Peter. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Take a look at that picture. You see that young one jumping in that mud puddle? Look at that face. It's filled with joy. It's stomping on something that's really messy and yucky and finding joy in it. You know what the Holy Spirit does? He works in us that inexpressible joy. Even in the midst of really bad situations, situations that bring us to tears, situations that hurt us, situations that the evil one would use to draw us away from the love of the Lord, we can jump in the midst of that mud and find joy because who is there? Jesus is there. 
Jesus is there, the good shepherd, who even when I go through the darkest of valleys, knows how to get me through there, because he's been through it, and he knows the way out. Jesus, the one who can laugh at the evil one and say, I won. That grave is very empty, and I'm right here ruling all things for the good of my church, and I know this child of mine that you are trying to make life miserable for. It's not going to happen, because that child is with me and will be with me for all eternity. So in Jesus, we can have great joy. In Jesus, there is no doubt whatsoever that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And in Jesus, even in the midst of a messed up life, we can jump in the mud puddles and find joy, even with all of our faults and failures, because our living Lord has forgiven us. Our living Lord has poured out his spirit in us. Our living Lord goes with us and brings us through this life, using us according to his plan to glorify him and grow his kingdom. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. God be with you. Have an excellent rest of the day because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.